Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Morning, good morning, morning, everyone. Hallelujah. Good morning, all right. Pastor. Uh, good morning, good my morning. dear. I want to thank all of you and appreciate you all. We are in for a great feast this morning by the grace of God. Heaven is open to this meeting. The angels of God are very much present in this meeting today. It's a very special day in what God is doing in, the, in our days in the whole nations. And as you know, each time we come here, we're not coming just for our own self. We are coming here to represent and to enforce God's passion for every single soul. God's passion, God's desire, God's hunger, God's wishes, God's desire, God's longing for every community, for every city, for every nation. We are here to say, Jesus, you didn't die in vain. Everything you died for, you must see it come to pass. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He bore the cross. He endured the cross and he, he bore the shame. So we're here for the enforcement of that joy he had in view. That is joy for all the nations of Africa, for all the nations of Europe, for all the nations of Australia, for all the nations of South America, all the nations of Asia and North America. We are here to enforce that desire, that joy, that longing of Christ. And he will answer us. By the grace of God, before we get into the war room, which today we are dealing with global wealth transfer, global wealth transfer. Before we get into that war room, I want to bring your knowledge or bring your attention to another key for, you know, revivals, the revival nugget. Today, the Lord laid in my heart to speak to us on the place of contrite spirit the contriteness of spirit and heart in you know, expediting revival moves, in enforcing revival, in sparking revival flame, contrite heart, contrite heart. Now, I'm going to read three scriptures to communicate that passion of God. From verse 2 of Isaiah chapter 66, it says, for all those things has thy hand made, and all those things have been, have been, says the Lord. But, but, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite heart, and trembleth at my word. Now, the scripture is revealing to us the woman God looks up to. It's interesting to know that we look up to some people. We look up to some people, but there are people God look up to. That's quite interesting. So, but to this man will I look. I will search for him. Wherever he is, I will locate him. No matter the village, no matter the, you know that John the Baptist was in the desert, in the wilderness. And the Bible said the word of the Lord appeared to him in the desert, in the wilderness. Moses was at the backside of the mountain, at the backside of the mountain. And God went and located him there. He said his eyes run to and fro the whole earth to show himself faithful, mighty, gracious, awesome to those whose hearts whose heart are perfect towards him. Those whose hearts are perfect towards him. Perfection of heart does not mean those who don't have fault, but those who love him above everything and above everyone. Those who love him above everything and above everyone. Number two, those who are humble, at heart. Number three, those who have contrite heart, contrite heart, contrite heart. These are the things, the people that attract God's attention. He said, but to this man will I look, 
even to him that is poor and of a contract and not poor that he doesn't have money. No. David was so rich, the king had nothing to look for. He had everything. But David was God's anchor man because of the contriteness of his heart. And he trembles at my word. Trembles at my word. Number two scripture, the Lord laid in my heart, First Peter chapter 5, verse number 5. 1 Peter 5, verse 5. And I read, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. He said, humble yourself therefore, verse 6, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you, that he may exalt you in due season, in due time. The Bible says that humility comes before honor. Humility comes before honor. Finally, because of time, I want to read Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. Isaiah 57, verse 15. And I read, for thus says the high and the lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high place. I wanted to take note of this. If it's possible, can you show it, Brother Z? Can you show me this translation from the New Living Translation? Uh, I, I will appreciate it if it's possible. Now it says, For thus says the Lord, and the and sorry, for thus says the, the high and lofty one of one that inhabits eternity, whose name is, is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. That is God describing himself. He says, I inhabit eternity. I'm in control of eternity. I am in charge of eternity. And for your information, I dwell in the high and lofty place. I dwell in the high and lofty place. And then he says, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. That's interesting. He says he dwells in the high and lofty place with him, with him who has a contrite and humble spirit, who has a contrite and humble spirit. So wherever God dwells, that's where the contrite hearted and the humble hearted men are also seated. Wherever Christ is seated, wherever God is seated, that's the same place. He said, I sit with him. I sit, I sit with him. That is of a contrite and the humble spirit. But look at where I'm going. He said, to revive the spirit of the humble, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. It's interesting. Now, we're talking about revival. He says, I dwell in the high and holy place, the lofty place, and I'm not there alone. I'm not there with Angel Michael and Angel Gabriel alone. I am there also with the spirit of just men made perfect. I am there with the spirit of the saints that have chosen the path of contriteness and humility. I am seated in the high place with them to do what? To do what? To do what? Say to revive the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So the men and women that go used to trigger revival are men that are contrite in heart, humble in heart, contrite in heart, humble in heart, tremble at the word of God. These are the men, these are the women that fit for revival, you know, works. New Living Translation says, or the high and the lofty one who lived in eternity, the holy one says, I live in the high and lofty place with those, with those 
whose, whose spirit are contrite and humble, I restore the crushed spirit and the humble and revive the courage of those with repentant hearts. So I want to welcome you to a world of, you know, contriteness and humbleness of heart, which qualifies you to sit together with God in the high and lofty place. And when you get there and you settle there, when you settle there, when you settle there, when you are not there because of pressure, when you are not there because you feel beaten by the issues of life, you are so successful yet you are contrite and humble. You are so exalted yet you are so humble and contrite. When you settle there in that place of contriteness and humility of heart, then God will put an oil. God will release a mantle, a mantle, a mantle, a staff, a staff of, of authority will be given to you to go into the world and bring revival and bring healing and bring liberation. So I want to congratulate you for God bringing you to this platform. It's not a joke. It is because he has chosen you. That's why you see yourself coming here. It's not that I invited you. I may or somebody else may have invited you, but God who set up this global harvest, you know, prayer, prayer war room, this global harvest war room, he's thinking big of you. He's thinking big of you. So get for the best. Shall we begin to pray? Let's begin to pray with thanksgiving. Thank him. Thank him. Within one minute, thank him. And then we get into the nations as we begin to prophesy. Anytime we're going to prophesy over the nations, remember, you are releasing the spirit of grace and revival and salvation as you pray in tongues. For he that prayeth in an unknown tongue, he speaketh to God, he speaketh to God, he speaketh mysteries that we do mighty and wondrous things. You are changing the, the narratives of communities, of cities and nations without knowing because God will create the fruit of your lips. God is putting a word of prophecy in your lips over the nations. So let's thank God for the word we've received and let's ask God to grant us contriteness of heart and humbleness of heart. God help me to develop such a contrite and humble heart that anywhere I go, I will be known by human and by angels as a woman, as a man with a contrite heart, a repentant heart, a humble heart. Shall we pray? Please, you can unmute yourself, unmute yourself and pray. Humbleness of spirits. The contract of an Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you for the grace of contriteness, the grace of humility and repentance. Thank you. Help us to be exemplary and let it be that you will lift us into where you are, that where you are, there shall your descendants be, so, there shall your disciples be, there shall your followers be. Thank you for lifting us into the high place, the lofty place, the highly exalted place. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, let's begin to pray for the nations. Please, we have about 10 minutes maximum to do that. Let's begin to prophesy. Go ahead. Thank you. Unmute yourself, please. Let's all unmute ourselves. Please unmute yourself as we prophesy over these nations. Father, we thank you for Nigeria. As we pray that nations of the world as we lay our lives Ya bala ra 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 
Ya 
Amen. Can I ask uh, Mama Clarita to briefly thank God for those continents and nations? Briefly, thank God. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that you are Yahweh Elidam, Lord of all nations. Thank you, Father, for giving us the nations as our inheritance. We pray that your spirit will hover upon each and every nation in each and every continent. We enthrone you as Lord, as God, as Savior of all the nations. Be thou glorified, O great Jehovah, as all hearts are being turned towards you to worship you and to glorify you. Thank you, Father, that the gods of these nations will totter before your holy name as you establish your throne over these nations. For all nations belong to you. The earth belongs to you and its fullness thereof. Mm. Glorify yourself even this morning over the nations. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. 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 And thank you so much, Mom Clarita. All right, I want to ask Mama Hart to lead us in the prayer of today, and uh, God will be glorified. After that, um, Pastor Levan, you lead, you bless the communion for us. Mama Hart, please over to you. Thank you, Pastor Lights, and thank you, everyone connected to the platform. Um, my assignment this morning is to lead us in the prayer um, for global um, wealth transfer, global wealth transfer. And I believe um, the reason why God has chosen to make it global, the transfer of wealth to be global, is because of his global agenda. According to Zechariah 1.17, he said, crying, cry yet saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my city through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. 
my city through prosperity my shall yet be spread abroad because of God's intention mm -hmm. of global harvest. And so that is why he's intending to do global wealth transfer for to achieve his purpose globally. That it is through prosperity that he will be his kingdom. Uh, you know, be spread abroad into all the nations of the world. And now uh, 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 there are two things um, that God uh, does uh, to be able uh, for, for us to experience, you know, um, um, global wealth transfer, just like he did, you know, before time. Just like in the, in the issue of the um, Holy Spirit of God, when Peter was talking in his time, he said, this is the beginning of the promise of Jewel. And then anything that has the beginning has an end. So the second reason why the Lord is choosing to do a global wealth transfer is because we are the people who are at the fullness of the age. We are the people that are the fullness of the age. And so the Lord, just like the Holy Spirit, you know, the beginning of uh, the upon of the Holy Spirit happened in the apostles. And then we are the generation to see the full manifestation of the Spirit of God. And part of his ministry is to give power to make wealth. Power to make wealth. Now, there are two uh, key things that we, uh, we need to bring into that will activate the wealth transfer, the global wealth transfer. And that two things are the, are the two things that the Lord normally do. Number one of them is in the book of Exodus chapter number three, Exodus chapter one, Exodus chapter three, verse 21. Um, Exodus chapter three, uh, verse 21. Now look at what the Lord did um, to be able to bring Israel into the wealth transfer. And he said, he said, I will, Verse 21, verse 21, he said, I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptian. And it will come to pass that when you go, you will not go empty handed. You will not go empty handed. And the Bible noted, you know, that it happened so that they came out loaded with silver and gold. So one of our prayer this morning for the favor of God. Then number two is what is written in Ecclesiastes chapter two, verse number 26. And I'm going to say that and, and then do a little explanation of how this thing connects, what, how we are going to make our prayer. In Ecclesiastes chapter two, verse number 26, 226 of Ecclesiastes, the Lord says there in verse 26, um, yeah, 26 he said, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy to those who please him, but for the sinners, but if a sinner become wealthy, God take the wealth away and give it to those who please him, even this, however he said is willingness. Now, but the key thing we want to bring out there is that the way the Lord will do this word transfer is not for you to go to your neighbor and then ask your neighbor to come out of his house. He said, God will give wisdom. He give wisdom. He give knowledge to people who please him. So the wealth will be transferred through a supernatural knowledge. And we see that that was what he did for Jacob. The wealth of Laban was transferred to Jacob by supernatural knowledge and revelation that the Lord gave the young men of what to do. The same thing happened in Egypt. When it happened in Egypt through the life of a Joseph, he, the Lord told the young men what to do, the secret that meant the whole world of the whole world turned to Egypt. It was through wisdom of God. It was through the supernatural knowledge of God. We saw that also happen with uh, Isaac. So all the people who experienced wealth transfer including Solomon, it was give, it was through the wisdom of God, it was through favor and through wisdom. Now, what is it that we are praying? Beloved, we are not just going to pray for wisdom, we are not just going to pray for favor, because it does not happen by praying alone. It does not happen, I wish it does happen by praying. So once we pray, 
then it happened. No, it does not happen that way. It happened by covenant. The people who received these things, have, there was a covenant they key into. And so our prayer this morning, according to Daniel chapter number 11, the Bible said, those who deal wickedly with a covenant shall be corrupted with flatteries. But those who do know their God shall be strong and they will do exploit. So what we are going to pray this morning, what will be the covenant that Israel had to you know, fulfill in order to, for God to give them the favor he promised? The covenant that they fulfilled was the covenant of total surrender. If you remember that Moses had to fight to stand against Pharaoh when Pharaoh was saying, leave your wife, leave your children, leave your wealth. And Moses said, no, 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 we are going to go with everything. So Moses stood in his ground and fought to stand to, uh, to ensure that Israel, you know, went out of Egypt with everything to serve the Lord. So the first thing that we want to pray is for God to help me and you, to help God's people to totally surrender to the Lord on every area, including their finances. He said, those who deal wickedly with the covenant shall be corrupted with the flattery. The flattery to think that the wealth transfer will happen to us even if we don't live by the covenant. So let's open our mouth and ask the Lord to help us to live in obedience to the covenant, the covenant, the covenant, the covenant. Let's open our mouth. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ mm. of Nazareth, we ask you this morning, oh God, yes, that you Lord. help us, God, Father, to respond to the covenant, to respond yes, to the covenant, yes. the covenant, to, the yes, to, the covenant yes, to obey yes, the covenant, to yes, the covenant, yes, the covenant yes, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the covenant of total surrender, to surrender our life to the Lord, not to us. Pray for one another, Lord. We support one another, Lord. To be our each other's mirror and to receive the correction of the fellow Christians in judgment and we will not judge those that are not Jesus. Jesus, we pray even for my heart and for skin. We pray for each and every Christian that we are we are covering each other's mirror where we don't see what in Jesus Christ then we pray with thanksgiving amen so now we have prayed in the, for the grace for this covenant of total surrender the next thing we need to pray for the covenant of obedience you know in the book of Deuteronomy 26 you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do then he said I will make you you know to become high above every nation and all these blessings we come upon you. So we are going to pray for the covenant of obedience, obedience to the covenant of tithing, obedience to the covenant of sacrificial giving. Look into the life of all the people that enjoy wealth transfer. They were Israel had to sacrifice. The last thing they did was a sacrificial lamb. They sacrificed. There was a sacrifice that resulted to their total release. We are going to pray for that covenant of obedience to the Lord, to his word, the covenant of, uh, you know, sacrifice, because that's what brings you into covenant, <laughs> sacrificial giving, sacrificial giving. And then we're going to also pray for the covenant of, no, I'm reading, so the, uh, we are going to pray and ask the Lord to help us in the issue of the covenant of fighting, the covenant of fighting in this new testament, and also the covenant of Let's open our mouth and ask the Lord to help us in, to obey his covenant, his covenant, his covenant. Let's open our mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray to God that he grant us the Lord to obey you, to obey you, to obey you. God, God, my intercession to obey you in the area of our okay, to obey you in the area of our life, to obey you in the area of our life. Thank <laughs> you. 
Blessed O God be your name. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ the Lord, because of our time, men and brethren, we are now going to pray for that two things that the Lord does, and that is the, the release of supernatural wisdom. Beloved, it is exactly the time and the season. The, the world will not come to the church. Uh, the Isaiah the prophecy of chapter two and Micah prophecy of chapter four will never come to pass until there is this world transfer, until there must be a, what attract the world to the church. Is not they are not interested in the religion. They are interested in solution. When what is it the world is, their mind is dominated. They are looking for money, success by all means. They are going into occultism. But when they turn around and see this thing they are looking for, from the, by men they are so, they find it in the church. That's when Isaiah prophecy will come to pass. Where in the last day, the mountain of the house of God shall be exalted above the hills. And nations will trip, and they are saying, Let's go to the house of the God of Jacob, for they will show us the way, the way to make this money and make it the, the blessing of God, make it rich and added no sorrow. We have been, our heart has been, you know, more gauged. And so, but we can see these people that are living this righteous life have gotten what we are looking for by selling ourselves to the devil. No need, let's turn to him. Beloved, this is exactly when Isaiah prophecy and the multitude era of the church, and that's the time and where that we are in. So we are going to pray this morning. Having prayed and received the grace to be true to the covenant, to be true to totally surrender our life to the Lord, to be true to the covenant of sacrifice, for the, uh, the Solomon become the richest by sacrifice, the, David the same thing. Jacob, he made a covenant with God of a titan before titan become a law. And that in response to that, God gave him supernatural wisdom. And so every of these things have this underlining principle. Having received the grace to obey the Lord, to begin to live true to the covenant of titan, to the covenant of sowing, to the covenant of first fruit, to the covenant of a sacrificial given, we want to pray right now to say to the Lord, here we are across the nations of the world, your people. Give us that supernatural wisdom, the kind of wisdom you gave to, 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 to uh, Joseph, the type you gave to uh, 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 Jacob, that made them to tap into the very, uh, you know, uh, as a wealth, wealth that you have designed for the sake of the, uh, the, the, the global, uh, you know, a harvest that is. Uh, is before us. Lord, we ask you this hour for that same wisdom. And then number two, pray for favor. Favor and wisdom. Let us pray for it. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, Lord. Pray, pray for, for supernatural wisdom. For your favor. Let I hear a... I may do that for which I am created. The favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God. I will come to the favor of God. The kind of favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God. 
now men and brethren let's begin to receive from the lord right now this is the moment to receive is the moment of impartation because there are many of god's people across the nation that have been called faithful to the covenant of tithing to the covenant of a sacrifice in our personal lives this is the hour begin to receive from the lord right now the impartation of supernatural favor that will push you to where you belong the impartation of supernatural wisdom supernatural knowledge and on, uh, 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 ideas and understanding we begin to receive it right now is an act of faith he said whatever you desire when you pray believe that you receive it then you have it let's begin to consciously declare our faith and begin to receive it right now in the name of jesus father we receive this morning we receive of god oh god this wisdom we receive of god the favor the supernatural the god of salvation of favor supernatural impartation we receive favor this morning oh god we receive wisdom we receive all the god we receive it and we don't even go around that we don't go around we don't go around we don't go around so that is the father we will come to god then that of god so let us so let us of let us in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanks. Amen. I want to conclude this section and hand over. Lord, we want to thank you this morning for your global agenda, for your global wealth transfer. Lord, we thank you because we are existing in such a time as this. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for counting us worthy of such honor. Lord God, we thank you even this morning for showing us the key, that the key is obedience, to be true to the covenant. For those you said who are not true to the covenant, who deal wickedly with the covenant, shall be corrupted with flutters. Lord God Almighty, but we are not among the people that deal wickedly with the covenant. Lord God Almighty, and because we are going, we are true to the covenant, to surrender totally to you, every aspect of our life, to surrender totally to you, including our finances, and we, oh God, we key into the covenant of obedience to you, to obey you even in the area of our oh God finances, to obey you, King of glory, to become people that are of sacrifice on every area, serving you sacrificially, giving sacrificially, fighting sacrificially, oh God, Father, sowing, oh God, into your kingdom on every side, Lord God Almighty, obey you, O oh King of glory, to submit to oh God even the issue of our first fruit, Lord God Almighty, because, oh God, we have, oh God, covenanted, oh God, to be true to the covenant, we demand right now, we receive that impartation, of the supernatural favor. Lord God Almighty, the same that you gave to the Israel that made them, oh God, Father, to be able to receive 430 years, four generational wages, oh God, that were stolen from them because of slavery. Lord God Almighty, you are doing exactly that, Father. And your children across the nations of the world are the recipient, oh God, of that generational, oh God, Father, Oh God, a, a wealth that our forefathers did not enjoy because they served other gods. 
We bless you because we are the recipient and we receive it. And we receive the supernatural wisdom of the divine ideas and divine knowledge of inventions of God, divine ideas of alternative of God, Father, of God, economic systems, Lord God Almighty, divine ideas, Lord God Almighty, that will bring the world, that will bring us to the realm where we become, oh God, lend us to nation. We are king of glory because we have abundance, oh God. We will, oh God, satisfy the heart of the longing, the longing of the poor and the needy, needy nation, needy cities, oh God. Because, oh King of glory, you have brought us to this abundance, oh God. Your kingdom can now be spread into all the world because we have received the assignment, oh God, to bring this gospel to all creation, Lord, before the trumpet sound. Lord, so we receive, oh God, that wealth required to push your agenda globally of global harvest. Blessed be thy name. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I hand over. Over to you, um, oh, Pastor Laden or Pastor Light. Thank you. God bless you abundantly. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Pastor Levan, please go ahead with the communion. <laughs> Good morning, family. Shall we all take our communion emblem? Uh, Father, we just, as we take, um, just get ready with your emblem. Father, we just want to thank you this morning, my God, for the reminder, my God. Father, we thank you that because you loved us so much, you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to come and die for our sins so that we do not perish but have eternal and everlasting life. Father, you taught us the power of sacrificial giving. You taught us the power of love. You've taught us the power to give unconditionally, to love unconditionally, oh Lord. We give you all the praise. We thank you for the season that you placed us in, oh Lord. Father, the season, my God, of transfer of global wealth, my God, for you are the God that gives us the power to create wealth. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor, oh Lord. Father, we exalt your holy name, oh Lord. We thank you, King of glory, Father, that this morning we are renewing, that we've renewed our covenant with you, oh Lord. We've renewed our covenant of total commitment with you, King of glory. Father, for you are the God, Father, that finds a person that pleases you. You are the God that grants us wisdom. You are the God that grants us divine knowledge and happiness, my God. Father, you are the God that grants us the, 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 the riches and the wealth, my God, from even my Father, the, the, where we least expect it, O oh Lord. You are the God, the turnaround God, the God of suddenly, O oh Lord. Father, we pray that just as you gave Jacob, my God, the, the wisdom, my God, to be able to create wealth, my God, of our love and my God. So, my Father, do we tap into that grace and anointing, O oh Lord, this morning, my God, through our covenant, O oh Lord. Father, even as we take your body and your blood, we have come before you this morning with a contrite and a broken spirit. We have come to you this morning, my God, and we have, my God, prayed pray for you to help us, Lord, to release, my God, a, a, a place of a contrite and a humble heart at all times, you know, glory. Help us to develop our a, a humble spirit and a broken heart. Search us, oh Lord, Father, where we need my Father to be searched. Oh Lord, show us our show us those things that you talk about when we, you say we should examine ourselves. We have examined ourselves before you this morning, oh Lord, Father, and we thank you, my God for the obedience to tithe, for the obedience to give him you know, glory. Father, we pray and we also thank you for your body and your blood that was shed for us on Calvary. Father, this bread ceases to be bread. It, has, it is your body. And my God, we, as we take your body, we remain in you and you remain in us, O oh Lord. Amen. And as we take your blood, you remain. we remain in you and you remain in us. Your word says, if you abide in me and I abide in you, whatever you ask 
for whatever you pray, ask for and believe, you shall receive. Oh Lord, thank you that this is the moment to receive the impartation of super, the supernatural grace of favor and wisdom for a turn around, my God, the God of suddenly, my God, drop that revelation that we need, drop that great word that we need, Father, my Father, to do and to be obedient to your word. Obedience is better than sacrifice, King of glory. Grant us that word of, of obedience, King of glory, that Father, we shall be worthy to receive your greatness and totally surrender to you in spirit and in truth. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we Amen. thank you as we take your body and your blood. We give you all the glory and all the praise. And we we, 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 we take this in remembrance of you. We, we, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to take this together in oneness, in unity, and in love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Shall, shall, we, shall we take our, um, shall we partake? Thank you. Pastor Light, please over Thank to you. you. Man of God. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. All right, people of God, we thank God for the blessings of the communion. We rejoice for the privilege given to us for that. Thank you all for today. We are meeting again tomorrow morning, same time. We are preparing for the 24 hours prayer chain beginning 6 p.m. Saturday. Please, we all need to be there to join from the beginning, 6 p.m. on Saturday. It will pull through to 6 p.m. on Sunday. So please make your plan for the weekend. Choose the times you will be there. You don't need to be there for the whole 24 hours. But if you can be there, some people have sent me a message. They will be there for up to six hours, some four hours some 10 hours, whatever time you want to choose, three hours or two hours, as the grace of God is hour is loaded with specific prayer points, which I'm going to pass on to the group today so that you can see what we are in for. God bless you. Please communicate it to others, intercessors around the world to join in that 24 hour. God bless you and keep you and sustain you and cause his face to shine upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow us. Days of our lives. And we shall be in the house of the Lord. And ever. Amen. The grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Have a great day. God bless you. Great day to you.